Howdy folks, yesterday I showed you this two-stage uh, air pump, uh, inflatable pump, that we demoed filling up a, uh, a kite with using a 3S LiPo battery. And I mentioned that they're kind of cool inside and we might want to take a look at it uh, within. So that's what we're going to do today. Um, just going to show you the package real quick. So this is a uh, 3S 6000 milliamp pack, that's probably what I'm going to use with it. And as you can see, it, it fits into that little pouch in the back of the uh, bag here, no problem. And then the, uh, there's a little hole in the back that the cord comes through. And I thought we'd go over specifications as well. The maximum inflation pressure, it says, is 80 uh, kilopascals. That's roughly 11 and a half PSI. So if you had an inflatable that needed more than, I, I'm saying about 10 PSI, this is probably as much as this thing could put out. If you need more than that, it might not be the best unit. For kites and most inflatables, that would be fine. So uh, there's four Phillips screws. Just fast forward through this. Okay, so those were a proper bugger to get out. And what do we got here? Just a little circuit board up here. Oh, there we go. And you can see how it works a lot better. Now, I'm not going to take this all apart. I'm sure no one cares. Maybe we should just zoom in though a bit. Okay, so now that we've zoomed in, we'll just take a really quick look at the components in here. So this is the um, centrifugal impeller fan. This is what provides the high volume, um, low pressure air flow. Uh, kind of sounds like a vacuum cleaner when it was running, if you remember. And here's the outlet. And when you actually look at these things, there is a lot going on. And so it's no wonder they cost a few bucks. And then here is and there's a motor that drives it fairly big one and then here's the motor that drives the um, piston pump and there's actually two reciprocating pistons in here I don't know if we can move these by hand there we go so this motor is driving both of those and when this one's down this one's up so it's giving a r relatively steady output of pressure and then uh, there's a main circuit board in here. I'm not going to pull it out. I don't know if, we can, if you can see down in there or not. Probably not, but the, it looks like there's two relays. And it doesn't even look like there's uh, a logic. I don't even think there's a logic board on there. It's all, it's all analog control. And we'll check this out to see how it actually works. So if you remember, first it flows high air, or high air volume under low pressure with the fan pump. And then once a certain back pressure is um, created, it switches over to the uh, reciprocating piston pumps here. So we'll just plug this in and I'm going to we'll plug this, we'll turn it up, we'll, we'll start it up. And what I want you to watch, there's a little switch here, maybe we can zoom in on it. Um, there's a, I, I imagine, I, I haven't opened this up, it's probably glued, but just guessing there's a little flap, flap in here. So when the air pressure, when this turns on, it's flowing air and it opens that up. And then once the back pressure is created and that airflow stops, this probably closes and then these little contacts close and then trigger the secondary re turn off the relay that drives this and engage the relay to um, to drive the reciprocating piston pumps. So let's just turn it on and I'm just going to block the outlet up here with my finger. We'll zoom out after but I just want you to see that little... Uh... So there you saw it move and as I block the air you can see it closes Let me just zoom out so you can see how that kind of works. 
there's obviously a delay in there so there might uh, there might be a little timer chip in there from the time that that closes to the time it turns this off and engages the the piston pump the, re the reciprocating pistons and then up here there's a little diaphragm which is also detecting the back pressure so as the pressure builds and builds and builds uh, this diaphragm will move until it turns the or until it uh, hits this little micro switch in here it's pushing out against the micro switch and then that's what tells it to turn off and when you're adjusting the pressure you're basically uh, there's a little screw here that's moving in and out so I imagine it's just putting uh, there might be a spring in there or something it's probably just putting more pressure on that diaphragm because the higher you dial this up the more that little gear inside moves inwards into this plunger and the more you crank this down the more spring pressure there is so the more uh, air pressure has to be overcome to um, to toggle that little uh, micro switch there so we'll just do it again here and dial it back down a bit and we'll hit another start sequence and on plug it up You can hear the relays uh, kicking on and off, um, but build quality is pretty good. There's, uh, these are actually bearinged, you can see. So I would imagine, as far as service goes, it wouldn't hurt every now and then to lube lubricate these pistons up. Looks like it's just a uh, probably a nylon piston that's sliding in this probably met just standard tin or sleeve. Who knows? Um, Fairly beefy motors. Uh, wiring's not bad. Soldering, not bad. Um, so yeah, you can see why these are worth a few bucks. And as far as the air intake goes, where was that? So here's, here's the front cover. You notice, you remember there was an in and an outlet. So this is blowing the air out, but you can also go in. It's also pulling air in, and that's just pulling air in from the uh, the high volume fan pump. And as you can see, there's a little gasket on here that goes around this hole. That's the air intake for the fan, and it's just drawing it through this, basically this little snorkel, into the intake. Something else of interesting note uh, on that inlet, there's actually a screen in here to prevent uh, crap from going into the pump and going into your inflatable. And I'm, I was looking, well, how do you clean the screen out? Well, on the front side, you probably noticed it, there's this little cover. And you can take off the four screws and uh, clean out that screen. And as far as the reciprocating pumps, they get their air just internally inside the uh, unit and they're not pushing much volume, but higher pressure. So that's all there is to it. Uh, the one thing that I wanted to do though was find out what the actual current draw is on it. And that might help you to decide what kind of battery uh, capacity you need for this depending on um, you know how much time you need it to be running. So we've got the uh, clamp meter hooked up to this uh, so we can check the amperage. I didn't, I'm not using my DMM because the highest uh, current rating it will go up to is 10 amps. And I have a feeling this is going to be over 10 amps just by looking at the size of the motor on these things and knowing how quickly we drain down that, drain down that uh, 3S 2200 milliamp hour pack yesterday. I'm going to start it. We'll just let the fan run so we can see what the current draw on it is. And then I'm going to plug the outlet and we can see what the current draw goes up to because I imagine the reciprocating pump is going to use more power. So I'm just going to zoom in on the meter here. Okay, so we'll just turn the fan on first. Watch the meter. So it looks like when it first turned on, it peaked upwards over 30 amps, dropped back down to around 10, which is at right now. Now if we plug this, I'm just going to turn this off for a second. I want to explain something here. When you when you actually block a centrifugal fan pump, 
it'll actually draw less current. It's kind of counterintuitive what you'd think. You'd think as you're blocking this off, it's going to be working harder. But that's not the case because it's actually uh, moving less volume of air. So you'll see when I plug this off, you'll notice that this will actually drop. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to manually hold that little, uh, you know, that little flap valve switch on the bottom of the centrifugal pump housing. I'm going to hold that uh, open so it doesn't engage the um, reciprocating pump when the uh, pressure builds so you can see how the, how the current actually drops. So we'll turn it back on. Okay, I'm holding that little valve open and now I'm going to block this off. And as you heard, it also gets, you know, it's, it sounds like it's speeding up going faster. So if you've ever wondered why your vacuum cleaner, uh, you know, it sounds like it's really working its guts out and it speeds up when you plug the hose or you plug the exhaust. Um, it's actually working less hard and it's actually drawing less current because it's not uh, moving as much volume. Back to our thing, let's see how much the actual reciprocating pump draws now. So a reciprocating pump went up, it started at about, what, 18 amps, then dropped to around 15, 14. So, uh, yeah, it's a good thing we didn't hook it up to the DMM, we would have blown the fuse out of it. But that gives you an idea of the uh, current, current draw from this thing. And just to finish off before uh, we turn this off for the day, I just wanted to mention the wire on this thing. It's hideous. You probably noticed that yesterday even. Uh, this is stiff as hell. I don't know what kind of wire it is, but uh, I'm going to change that out to some high flex silicone stuff. It's easy enough to do on the circuit board here. I don't know if you can see that. It's using, it's just using crimp tab connectors on the, uh, to plug it into the circuit board there for the uh, input wiring. So it's easy enough to change if you wanted to do that as well, if you ended up getting one of these things. But that's all there is to her. Cheers, folks. Have a good one.